Talk about Naomi Campbell. Talk about Naomi Campbell. There's no me. Naomi, your mentor. Relax. Relax. I'm here to tell you today what happened. So, um, in December 2021, no, in December of 2020, Naomi was coming to Nairobi to do some shopping. Um, she was on holiday, but on a remote place. So she was in Nairobi doing shopping. And I texted her and she told me she's in Nairobi. So I was so excited to meet her. She was the first celebrity I was ever going to meet. Guys, I was to the roof. She texted me. She texted me. She was like, hey, I'm here. So she texted me the location. I went directly. I went with my brother. So my brother and I, we met her. We did some shopping. And as we're shopping, she's like, oh, you know, the plane that's taking us back actually has a few couple more sets do you and your brother want to join us on holiday hell yes so i so i just i was like oh that'll be so that'll be so lovely but i texted my dad i said hey get the car ready i'm coming to the house we are going to the airport in an hour to meet naomi campbell so she can take me on vacation so we go on vacation we have like a nice we had like a very nice vacation Naomi took care of me the whole entire time, the whole entire time. We were staying on the beach, we're doing this, and then like this, that, eating, just having fun, you know, what people do on vacation. And this one time we were on the beach, Naomi was like, oh, you know, we should do um, a documentary, a film about you living in Kenya. And I was like, oh yeah, that's fantastic. She introduced me to a couple of people um, in Hollywood. It was so lovely. So a couple of people she was on vacation were coming to Nairobi after the vacation. They were staying at the Kempinski. So I went to see them um, at the Kempinski when the whole thing was over. So I went, I sat down with them. I was talking to one of them and one of them was like, oh, it's so, like, how did you meet Naomi? And I was like, oh, no, I texted her on Instagram, blah, blah. And she was like, oh, yeah, she told us, like, she made you and she built you and she made your career. And I was like, what? No, that's not what happened. She, and I was like, you mean like helped me and like promoted me? And he, she was like, no, like what you have is because of her. And I was like, oh yeah, no, that didn't happen. It is very important. You remember that part later. Okay. So time goes by, time goes by. March, 2022. We have jumped into March, 2022. I get a phone call. Um, My phone is ringing. <laughs> Naomi Campbell. Oh, so um, I pick up. I'm like, hey, sis, like, how are you? How are you doing? And she's like, Elsa, how dare you? Oh, so I'm in shock, right? I'm in shock. I don't know what's going on. So I had just, so let me tell you what happened, the context of this um, phone call. So I had just finished a doc, not just, the previous year, I had done a documentary on my life, about my life, about bullying, about growing up with colorism, all these things, about comedy, where I fell in love with comedy. So um, um, the film was debuting at Tribeca Film Festival, and someone from Tribeca asked Naomi if she's coming, and Naomi thought the film was the film she had suggested to me on the beach about me leaving Kenya. So I was like, no, 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 that's not what it's about. I tried explaining to her. And then she was like, I'll sue you for the rights of this movie. And you know I'll win, right? So I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm telling you, this is not, it's not about that. So I tell her, let me call you tomorrow. And she, she asked me like, why didn't you tell me when I told you at the beach? And I was like, you're Naomi Campbell. You know, like I was starstruck. Like I, like it took me very long to like process that moment. But, and I was like, I'll call you tomorrow. So the next day I had a flight. The flight I was taking from... Botswana to Ghana where I met that guy actually that's the time I was taking that flight so I was supposed to call her the next day but it was a 22 hour flight and in Ethiopia there was no service so I couldn't call her so I called her the day after immediately I landed in Ghana so she's the first person I called I'm like hey um hey blah blah like are you free to talk and she tells me you were supposed to call me tomorrow you you were supposed to call me yesterday you didn't call me yesterday which she was very right about and she said i have the met gala and she was like this is the last time i'm speaking to you have a nice life and she hung up which i was like i was very saddened by the situation right but i was like if that's how she truly feels because i respect people's um space so i was like if that's how she truly feels fine it's okay so i let it go so uh after that, like a few months, things started going very badly for me. Things started going haywire. And I didn't, I didn't think it was, I thought it was because of the situation. Let me not lie. But 
I was like, you know, also it can be sure. So I was like, let me go. Because also having someone like Naomi Campbell not liking you in the industry is not a good thing. So I went to her. I apologized. I apologized. I'd already apologized when the situation had happened. But I went and I apologized again and again. I started calling her. I started texting her. And then one day she just texted me and she was like, stop stop trying to stop calling me i have a child to take care of so after that i just said okay there's nothing i can do about it i started drinking that's why i even quit alcohol i started drinking um i became i started drinking a lot a lot a lot yeah and then because i wasn't sure why things were going so wrong and i couldn't put my finger on it and then a few months later i met edward Enifor at a party and edward Enifor is one of oh my goodness he's one of the people i adore the most so i was like oh my goodness that's edward i have to go say hi so i go i say i'm like hey edward i'm such a big fan and he looks at me he looks at me He's like, I know you. And then he said something that made me think the situation with Naomi was causing like some of the trials and tribulations I was currently going through. So I was like, you know what? I need to fix this. So I went to one of our mutual friends and I was like, hey, please, can you um, tell Naomi? Because I knew they were going on holiday together. So I was like, hey, can you please tell Naomi to text me? And she was like, yeah, I'll make sure and blah, blah. So a couple of days went by and then Naomi finally texted me and she was like, yeah, I let that go a long time ago. I'm not one to hold a grudge. She sent me a very lovely text. She said, happy new year. So after that, after that happened, this was the new year, 2023. So after that happened, every single step I made, every single move I made, I told Naomi, every single thing I did, I told Naomi, I would... <laughs> breathe i tell naomi whether she would reply or not i would send her a message because i didn't want what happened to happen again and after some time after a few weeks i called my mom and i was like this isn't normal this doesn't feel healthy it feels it kind of feels you know it doesn't feel too nice it, it, there's nothing healthy or normal about this and i was like i don't want to be in a situation like this so after that, I just decided it is healthier for me to completely remove myself from the situation and get myself out. And you remember earlier when I said my friends said, um, the, the ones Naomi had introduced me to, when they said, oh, Naomi had made you. You remember when I said that? So I want to, I just want to um, acknowledge that and say that even through through all this right even through everything that happened first of all number one obviously i played a part in it because i am part of the story every in any situation you are in you play a part you play a role and i had my role and i apologize for my role and something else when she said she made me i'm not going to speak on that but i will say that naomi did give me a lot of credibility especially when i first entered the industry she gave me a lot of credibility and that's not something that i can just say oh you know this happened and naomi blah, blah, blah. i can't say that she did hold hold me up high and she introduced me to a lot of people she made me feel special she did a lot of things for me so i wouldn't say she made me but she did play um a big role in a lot of the things that i did in that space during that time so yeah me and her we're not friends we're not enemies we're not anything just not really in association so we're just strangers 